السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Okay. <clears throat> Seems like the connection's a little weak today. Hopefully it'll catch up inshallah. All right. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Once again to you all. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. So obviously, as I mentioned yesterday, we're starting um, very late today because it's uh, Yom al-Jum'ah. Some of you might have seen that I was giving khutbah at, um, at 3 o'clock uh, Central Time, 4 p.m. Eastern, which is our usual time for Quran 30 for 30. Um, <clears throat> there was all types of the post-Jum'ah crowd afterwards and some things going on. And of course, we are also planning, inshallah ta'ala, for our uh, big fundraising tonight. Um, and so the program that goes along with that, inshallah ta'ala, Valley Ranch Masjid tonight. So I apologize. This is, I, I just, I'm just getting, uh, getting started now, but inshallah, keep consistent. I want to actually congratulate those people that have been consistent, mashallah, throughout the month. I know that obviously I was expecting that a series of this much depth, um, would, you know, there would be a great drop off, um, after the first few lectures, but subhanAllah, there've been really the same consistent names each and every single uh, time, alhamdulillah, um, that have been paying attention. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from all of us. It's just uh, a few days left. Um, I'm, I'm definitely, um, you know, going to, to miss uh, the study of the Qur'an, but inshallah ta'ala, hopefully we'll continue with some other things after Ramadan um, as well. But again, want to thank you guys who have been a part of this from the start. Um, I, I hope that you found it beneficial. Um, and inshallah, we'll go ahead and continue now. So tonight, by the way, tune in. Tonight, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to have our Valley Ranch uh, Islamic Center fundraiser live. It is really, really uh, a good time, inshallah, for everyone to tune in and be a part of something special, inshallah. So that'll be about 10.30 p.m. Um, Central Time, inshallah ta'ala, 11.30 Eastern Time. So I invite you all to tune in tonight, inshallah ta'ala, as well. I'll have that streaming um, here also. Anyways. Let's start over again. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So now we are in Juz 26. Today is uh, the 26th day of Ramadan. Obviously tonight we have uh, the 27th night. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept on, on behalf of all of us and to, uh, to, to give us the reward of Laylatul Qadr. So Juz 26 contains quite, quite a few surahs. So now obviously with these last few surahs, you have a lot, these last few Juz, you have a lot of surahs that come within the same chapter. Um, it starts off with Surah Al-Ahqaf, which are the heights. The Ahqaf obviously referring to, um, you know, uh, Hud alayhi salam standing up. إِذْ أَنْذَرَ قَوْمَهُ بِالْأَحْقَافِ وَقَدْ خَلَتِ النُّذْرُ مِنْ بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا اللَّهِ Until the end of the ayah and, and others, where Hud alayhi salam stood up in the heights. He stood up and he gave his people the last warning, um, you know, of, of the destruction, the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming upon them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warning them, um, you know, of this last chance of theirs. And subhanAllah, what happens with them obviously is that they see They saw a big cloud coming their way, approaching them, and they thought that this is going to be risk for us, this is going to be rain. Rather, this was the punishment, the, the, the hastening of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have rushed towards. And, and so on and so forth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, showed them this, this cloud and they thought that there was benefit within it, but instead there was uh, punishment um, within it. Now a little bit about where we are right now. So Surah Al-Ahqaf is the last of group of surahs known as uh, the Hawameen, the surahs that start off with um, Hamim. And the Hamims, all of these surahs that start off with Hamim, uh, they all talk about the revelation and the rejection of the revelation. So they all sort of uh, stay within the same uh, theme. Um, the, the, the destiny of al-mu'ridlin, the destiny of those who reject, um, are, you know, in, in, in al-ahqaf, uh, being the people of Ad, the destiny of them is mentioned in this surah, and the surah is named after that last warning. So the hawamim, this group of surahs, 
which is a warning of the rejection of revelation. The last surah of the Hawamim that starts off with Hamim is named after Al Ahqaf, named after the heights where Hud stood up and called his people one more time. And Surah Al Ahqaf is one of those few surahs in the Quran that only has one name. So it doesn't have multiple names. Most of the surahs of the Quran actually have uh, numerous names. There are only about 30 or so surahs that only have one name in the Quran. Surah Al Ahqaf is one of them. Uh, it's revealed in late Mecca. So it's about the 10th or 11th year. Um, and subhanAllah, one of the powerful things about it is that it does not sound an apologetic tone at all or a vulnerable tone, even though this was the most vulnerable part of the Prophet ﷺ's life. This surah was revealed after Ta'if. And we know that it's revealed after Ta'if because of the story of the jinn um, accepting Islam, which comes uh, at the end of the surah. So this surah is revealed at a very, very vulnerable time in the Prophet ﷺ's life. But the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is still, you know, having hope in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and this is not a defeated tone by any means, as we see in uh, Al Hawamim. So uh, this surah uh, is a very powerful surah. It goes through many different aspects um, of the um, of the message of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala um, says, "ما خلقنا السماوات والأرض وما بينهما إلا بالحق وأجل مسمى." وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا عَمَّا أُنذِرُوا مُعْرِضُونَ قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ مَا تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَرُونِي مَاذَا خَلَقُوا مِنَ الْأَرْضِ أَمْ لَهُمْ شِرْكٌ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ إِيتُونِي بِكِتَابٍ مِنْ قَبْلِ هَذَا أَوْ أَثَارَةٍ مِنْ عِلْمٍ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, you know, um, say to them, have you considered that which you invoke beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Show me what they have created of the earth. Or do they have partnership in the creation of the heavens and the earth? Bring me a scripture before this or a remaining trace of knowledge if you should be uh, truthful. And the ulama say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started off with dalil aqli, which is a logical evidence. Show me, um, if, if you don't have an explanation for the creation of the heavens and the earth, show me um, you know, how you created the heavens and the earth. Or if you don't believe in a thought that if you don't believe in the originator of the heavens and the earth, then prove it from a logical perspective. Am lahum shirkun fis samawat, or do you have um, a you know a, a, a partnership in the way that this all came about? Ituni bi kitabim min qabli hada. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala starts off with the earth. Look around at the earth around you. Did you have anything to do with its creation? Did you have anything to do with the creation of the heavens? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, or is there a book that confirms the path that you are on today, or a trace of knowledge? So it starts off with dalil aqli, and it goes to dalil naqli. Dalil aqli is a logical uh, demand and then a demand for evidence. If you don't have a logical explanation, then provide some sort of evidence, some sort of textual evidence or some sort of scripture that justifies uh, where you are. Now, this is, of course, uh, the interesting thing about this is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started off with dalil aqli because the people who are being addressed here are not Ahlul Kitab. They're not people of the scripture. So the people of Mecca were not people who believed in a previous scripture. So it starts off with the challenge to the observable universe around them. Do you have any type of, of proof of, uh, you know, of, of, the, of the methodology of the path that you have chosen to take, that you all have chosen to take in this world? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, mentions the challenge to them um, in that regard. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says um, in verse 7, وَإِذَا تُتْلَ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُنَا بَيِّنَاتٍ قَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِلْحَقِّ لَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ سِحْرٌ مُبِينٌ so when our verses are recited to them as clear evidences, those who disbelieve, they say of the truth when it has come to them, that this is obvious um, magic. Or they'll say that he invented it and fabricated it. Um, so this, this challenge to the Prophet ﷺ, uh, or the way that they were rejecting the Prophet ﷺ in, in different ways, um, is being highlighted that they can't really even come to a conclusion as to how they should reject the Prophet ﷺ. They just want to reject him by any means necessary. So if they call him a magician, they call him a sorcerer, they'll call him a poet, they'll just throw these labels at him and see which one sticks because at the end of the day, they just want to take people away from the Prophet ﷺ and the message that he's brought. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 10, قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ وَكَفَرْتُمْ بِهِ وَشَاهِدَ شَاهِدٌ مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ عَلَى مِثْلِهِ فَآمَنَ وَاسْتَكْبَرْتُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ That have you considered if the Qur'an was from Allah and you disbelieved in it, while a witness from the children of Israel the, 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 uh, has testified 
um, to it and believed while you were arrogant. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not guide the wrongdoing people. This verse is referring to Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the greatest rabbi of Medina, who when he heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, um, or when he, heard, when he saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he heard the message of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that this is the prophesized Prophet. This is the Prophet that we were told about, and he accepted the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the chief rabbi of Medina, whose name, before being Abdullah, he was Hussein with a sad, Hussein ibn Salam, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam changed his name to Abdullah ibn Salam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the chief rabbi has accepted, and the chief rabbi has said that this man, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is indeed the messenger of Allah. فَآمَنَ وَاسْتَكْبَرْتُمْ So he believed, but you're still showing pride. You're still choosing to refuse. So uh, the, the, uh, the point being driven here is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fits the mold of this Prophet that's been expected. And this is the last warning. And some of the scholars say this transition now to the Madani period shows that this is where Al-Ahqaf is going. It's the last warning to the people of Mecca. As uh, as Hud alayhi salam um, gave the last warning um, to uh, to uh, the people of Ad, Allah subhanahu wa taala then mentions uh, to us, "Wallasayna al-insana biwaridehi husna." So Allah mentions the ingratitude to Him subhanahu wa taala, and then Allah subhanahu wa taala mentions in verse um, sixteen um, the the ingratitude towards the parents, the ingratitude towards the parents. Wallasayna. I'm sorry. This is verse fifteen. وَوَصَيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ إِحْسَانًا حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ كُرْهَا وَوَضَعَتْهُ كُرْهَا وَحَمْلُهُ وَفِصَالُهُ ثَلَاثُونَ شَهْرًا حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغَ أَشُدَّهُ وَبَلَغَ أَرْبَعِينَ سَنَةً قَالَ رَبِّ أَوْزِعْنِي أَنْ أَشْكُرَ نِعْمَتَكَ الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيَّ وَعَلَى وَالِدَيَّ وَأَنْ أَعْمَلَ صَالِحًا تَرْضَاهُ وَأَصْلِحْ لِي فِي ذُرِّيَّتِي إِنِّي تُبْتُ إِلَيْكَ وَإِنِّي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions and we have enjoined upon man to be dutiful and kind to his parents. His mother bore him in, with hardship, and she brought him forth with hardship. And, uh, uh, and with the bearing of him, the weaning period was 30 months, until he attains full strength and he reaches 40 years old. Then he says, My Lord, grant me the power and ability that I may be grateful for your favor which you have bestowed upon me and upon my parents, and that I may do deeds of righteousness that please you, and make my offspring righteous. Truly I have turned to you in repentance, and truly I am amongst the Muslims." This is referring to the person who recognized the right of Allah upon them and the right of the parents. And the scholars say that this verse is talking about Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu because Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was the first one to believe in Allah. And Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala, of course, from the companions of the Prophet sallallahu And Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu committed himself to the Prophet sallallahu And Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu showed excellence towards his parents. And he was a great role model for his children. And subhanAllah, Abu Bakr is the only companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whose entire family accepted Islam. Parents and children, parents, spouse, children, everyone accepted Islam from the family of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, though some took longer than others. So this is the example of a person who was grateful of the uh, favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon them. And so they were grateful to their parents. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, مَنْ لَا يَشْكُرِ النَّاسِ لَا يَشْكُرِ اللَّهِ Whoever does not thank the people does not thank Allah. And the first people that you should thank and be grateful to are your parents. So Allah is showing how this gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala translates and manifests into a gratitude that's shown to the parents as well. And on the other hand, on verse 17, so here you have uh, the person who says to his parents, Uffin lakuma. Both of you leave me alone. So he's ungrateful to his parents. And then what is you know, and then he says to them, Are you really trying to teach me? Are you really trying to uh, you know tell me that um, that that I'm going to be raised up again when generations before me have passed? So this person is denying Allah and he's denying his parents. So ingratitude has manifested itself in rejection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well as the rejection of his parents and the way that he speaks to his parents. And those are the people who punishment um, is justified um, for. Then Allah mentions in verse 21, So he, men he mentions Hud alayhi salam when he warned his people 
um, and they were deluded and uh, the people of Hud alayhi salam turned away and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends this surah off with um, in verse 29 وَإِذْ صَرَفْنَا إِلَيْكَ نَفَرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقُرْآنِ فَلَمَّا حَضَرُوهُ قَالُوا أَنْصِطُوا فَلَمَّا قُضِيَ وَلَّوْا إِلَى قَوْمِهِ الْمُنْذِرِينَ قَالُوا يَا قَوْمَنَا إِنَّا سَمِعْنَا كِتَابًا أُنْزِلَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مُوسَى مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْحَقِّ وَإِلَى طَرِيقٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ So it's verse 29, verse 30, where Allah mentions a group of jinn that came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقُرْآنَ That were listening to the Qur'an. When they heard it, they said to, they, they, they said to everyone, listen quietly. And when it was concluded, they went back to their tribes uh, as, as callers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they said, O oh, 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 our uh, people, indeed we have heard a book revealed after Moses confirming what was before it, which guides to the truth and to a straight path. So if you realize in the beginning of the surah, Allah mentions Abdullah bin Salam, who was a rabbi accepting Islam from the human beings, right? The chief rabbi of Medina accepting Islam. Here Allah mentions a group of Jewish jinn because they did not say Min Ba'di Isa, they said Min Ba'di Musa, after Moses as opposed to after Jesus accepting Islam, uh, accepting the message of the Prophet Sallallahu the, the most powerful message that we take from this though, is that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is showing that if human beings have rejected you, you don't know what's, you don't know who's heard your message and who's believed in you. So even if you faced rejection um, in that regard, don't give up because there are people um, that still that still will accept you even if you can't see them. And in the case of the jinn, you couldn't even see them, but they still accepted you, Ya Rasulullah. And they still went back and they called their tribes to Islam. So the point is, is that as a da'i, as one who's calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't despair because people are rejecting you. You don't know the effect, the actual impact that your message is having. So just focus on delivering the message. Let Allah deal with the impact piece. Let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deal with the result that will come with that. The next surah is Surah Muhammad and it's also known as Surah Al-Qital, which is the surah of battle. Um, this is really interesting, subhanAllah, because if you look at the way that these surahs are, um, are, are spaced out or the way that the, the, the equation um, or the sequence of these surahs comes, you have Al-Ahqaf, which is the final um, warning to the people. After Al-Ahqaf, after the final warning, you have the Qital that takes place, you have the, the, the fighting, um, that takes place. And after the fighting, the next surah after Muhammad, Surah Muhammad, is uh, Surah Al-Fatih, which is the victory, the opening and the conquest. So SubhanAllah, it's the warning, the battle, the conquest. The warning, the battle, and uh, and the conquest that comes in, you know, in, in the order um, of these surahs. So Surah Muhammad is the only Madani surah that's within this juz. So, or, I'm sorry, not the only one, but it's, it's the first Madani surah that we now have in this juz because Surah Al-Ahqaf is the end of Mecca. So now we're in Medina and uh, Surah Muhammad um, basically talks about the, um, you know, the way to deal with the captives of war, the, you know, to free them as a favor, to ransom them for their freedom, to, freedom, to exchange them uh, for your own captives or how to treat them if you decide to keep them as captives. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, you know, uh, talks about the importance of, uh, of of treating the captives kindly. And this is really interesting because it shows that we are not like our enemies. We should never become like our enemies. SubhanAllah, when people oppress us and people deal with us with injustice, injustice is to be responded to with justice. And so with the Prophet SallAllahu um, Alaihi Wasallam, they had this, uh, you know, they had this, um, this, this feeling of taking the moral high ground. And this is what manifests in Surah Muhammad in the uh, uh, in the Surah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the way that, that the, the captive should be treated. Now subhanAllah in verse 38 of Surah Muhammad Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa in qawman ghayrakum, thumma la yakunu amthalakum. And if you turn away he will replace you with another group of people and they will not be like you. They will be better um, than you. So subhanAllah, the, the, the message here, the people of Mecca faced istibdad. They, will, they were changed out. They could have had the Prophet ﷺ in Mecca. They could have treated the Prophet ﷺ right. And all the greatness that happened in Medina could have happened in Mecca. But because of their arrogance, that did not happen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala threatens in Surah Muhammad that if you turn, if you turn away, O followers of the Prophet ﷺ, you will be replaced. And those that come after will be better than you. So this deen does not depend on a specific group of people. 
right? This deen will continue and it is the honor of those that follow uh, rather than the honor of the deen itself. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning this importance of sticking with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through all of these things. And subhanAllah, the next surah is Surah Al-Fatih. Uh, surah Al-Fatih was revealed um, after Hudaybiyah, after the Treaty of Hudaybiyah uh, in the year 6 after Hijrah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that this evening a surah was revealed to me, that last night a surah was revealed to me which is dearer to me than the entire world and everything in it. Surah Fatih was more beloved to the Prophet ﷺ than the entire world and everything that is within it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off, Inna fatahna laka fathan mubina, that we have given you a clear victory. Why? It's, it's amazing because Surah Al Fatih, the, the conquest or the victory that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning, uh, actually accompanied the Muslims at a time where they felt humiliated. They went out to do Umrah to Mecca, so they left Medina in Ihram to do Umrah. They were prevented from doing Umrah. And the Prophet ﷺ went into a peace treaty with the people of Mecca, a truce that would give them peace, uh, where, where, they could, where, where they could come back next year. So the Muslims were not too crazy about this, right? I mean, the Prophet ﷺ was taking a very long-term oriented uh, approach. And Rasulullah ﷺ had a vision, he saw things through. The Prophet ﷺ knew the promise of Allah would come true, but a lot of people were really upset and their emotions got the best of them because Hudaybiyah is right out of Mecca. I mean, they could see it and they're not able to go to the Haram. Uh, they're not able to go to the Kaaba and they know that if they go in with force, then they could probably overwhelm the people of Mecca because of the numbers of the Muslims at that time. But they were instead the Prophet ﷺ enters into a peace treaty um, with the people of Mecca. And they, of course, the, the Muslims were so... Uh, were hopeful that the Prophet ﷺ would still be able to take them to Umrah, that when the Prophet ﷺ commanded them to sacrifice uh, and, to, and to exit their ihram, they just kind of stayed put. And Rasulullah ﷺ sought advice from Umm Salama radiallahu ta'ala anha. Umm Salama radiallahu anha said that, Ya Rasulullah, your people are upset. They're, they're still hopeful that something will come out of this. So she told the Prophet ﷺ, so you shave your head and you exit your ihram, and, and you slaughter and you exit your ihram and they will all follow. And that's exactly what happened is that the Prophet ﷺ went out at the advice of Umm Salama and he shaved his head, he, he, he slaughtered and he exited the ihram and the Muslims followed even though a whole bunch of them did not want um, to do so. Now in Surah Al-Fatih, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala acknowledges a few aspects of this. Number one, Islam thrives in peace and the Prophet ﷺ understood that if the believers were allowed to preach if they were allowed to give this message without persecution, then Islam would grow. And that's exactly what happened. Islam thrives in peace. The Prophet ﷺ did not want war. He wanted that treaty. And as a result of that, Fatih, as a result of Hudaybiyah, the clear victory, uh, the, the, the amount of Muslims almost, uh, almost was multiplied by 10 uh, within two years. So they went from, you know, they went from being a couple of thousand to being um, well over uh, 12,000, 13,000 um, by the time they would come back uh, to Mecca um, in, two years later in the conquest of Mecca. So basically this was the opportunity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eased the way. He opened the way for the Prophet sallallahu and for the believers in Surah Al-Fatih. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls Hudaybiyah the clear victory. He calls it the conquest. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu says, مَا كَانَ فَتْحٍ أَعْظَمُ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ فَتْحِ Hudaybiyah. There was no conquest greater in Islam than the conquest of Hudaybiyah, even though there was no fighting. Because Islam thrives in peace. It opened the door for da'wah, where people could, 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 uh, could teach the message of Islam without being persecuted. It gave them a break from the battles of the last few years. And subhanAllah, as a result of that, so many people entered into Islam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them that pleasure. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah was pleased with the believers إِذْ يُبَايِعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّطَرَ When they took the pledge with the Prophet وسلم, under the tree. Uh, there was a rumor when the Prophet وسلم, sent Uthman عنه, to negotiate in Mecca, there was a rumor that Uthman عنه, had been killed. And the Prophet وسلم, and the believers took a pledge under, uh, under, uh, under the tree in Hudaybiyah, which is known as Bay'at al-Ridwan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with them as they took that, pl that pledge to go out in support of their brother Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So they, ach they achieved the reward of gaining the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
even though no fighting actually uh, transpired. So this is, um, you know, this is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ Allah knew what was in their heart. This is verse 18. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anzala alayhimu sakina. He sent the tranquility into their hearts and He guaranteed for them the imminent conquest. And subhanAllah, when the Prophet ﷺ eventually came back to Mecca two years later, because the Meccans broke the treaty, uh, the Prophet ﷺ did not come in like a tyrant. He did not come in with vengeance. Instead, he forgave the people of Mecca um, in the conquest of Mecca, even though he surrounded them from all different directions and he could have easily overwhelmed them with, uh, with military force. The Prophet ﷺ showed grace instead. So Surah Al-Fatih is emphasizing the benefit that came from following the Prophet ﷺ, that this was a situation where the, the, the approach of the Prophet ﷺ was not a popular approach. It was, it, you know, it was not an emotional approach, it was a rational approach. And the approach of the Prophet ﷺ was not popular, but it turned out to be a good idea to follow the Prophet ﷺ. So what's the next surah? Surah Al-Hujurat. The next surah is Surah Al-Hujurat. لَا تَرْفَعُ أَصْوَاتَكُمْ فَوْقَ الصَّوْتِ النَّبِي وَلَا تَجْهَرُوا لَهُ بِالْقَوْلِ كَجَهْرِ بَعْضِكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ أَن تَحْبَطَ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ Don't raise your voices above the voice of the Prophet ﷺ. You know, recognize who the Prophet ﷺ is. Recognize that your salvation as an ummah comes لَوْ أَنَّهُمْ صَبَرُوا uh, You know, that, that your, 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 um, your, your salvation comes in being patient in following the Prophet ﷺ in not disturbing the Prophet ﷺ, in showing adab towards the Prophet ﷺ. So Surah Al-Hujurat, it, um, it addresses the, uh, the, the community in Medina in the way that they should deal with the Prophet ﷺ. So they should not call him from behind the Hujurat while he's in his home. They should not yell and scream at him to come out. They should give him his private time. They should show adab and manner, manners with the Prophet ﷺ. And they should always um, cede their opinion to the opinion of the Prophet ﷺ, forfeit their opinion to the opinion um, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala addresses the society in following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in peace. Surah Al-Fatih addresses the society in following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in war. So the next surah addresses how to follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in times of peace. So Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala mentions, this is called Surah Al-Adab, the surah of manners. Why? Because Allah mentions adab with Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How to show manners when there's gossip and rumors in a community. How to uh, show manners when, or how to deal with a fallout when there's uh, when, when two people quarrel in a community or two groups start to fight with one another. How to be a peacemaker. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, condemns mockery. So how to to be humble and not mock other people. Um, how to avoid uh, backbiting and, and and slander and things of that sort. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala addresses us with one another. Ya ayuhan nas, O people, inna khalaqnakum min dhakar wa untha. So we are brothers as a community, brothers and sisters, but as a humanity, Allah has created us as nations and tribes, male and female, so that we may get to know one another. In akramakum indallahi atqaqum, and the most noble of us is he who has the most taqwa, the most piety. Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is alimun khabir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all knowing and he's ever acquainted. Now subhanAllah, um, if you realize in Surah Al-Fatih, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised the believers. He says, Alima ma fi qulubihim. Allah knew what was in their hearts when they took the bay'ah with the Prophet ﷺ. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in Surah Al-Hujurat that the best people are those who have taqwa in their hearts, who have the piety in their hearts, which are the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. So Allah praised them in the previous surah, the companions. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the people who are most noble in the sight of God are those who have the most piety in their hearts. And Allah has already given taskiyah of the hearts of the companions in Surah Al-Fatih. The next surah is Surah uh, Qaf. And Surah Qaf is a Meccan surah. And it is the beginning of what's known as Al Mufassal. Uh, the surah Al Mufassal. The, surah, the surahs that are disconnected. And the reason why they're called the disconnected surahs is because the ayat in these surahs, the verses in these surahs, are very, very short and they're disconnected. Um, meaning, meaning that they're not long ayat like the other ayahs. They're very short ayahs, and that's sort of how the rest of the Qur'an continues now, from Surah Qaf onwards. Uh, the very famous statement about uh, Surah Al-Mufassal is that Aisha radiallahu anha says, had the first verse in the Qur'an be, been, do not commit adultery, the people would have said, you know, we will never stop committing adultery. And had the, verse, the first verse of the Qur'an been, do not drink alcohol, then the people would have said, 
we will never forsake alcohol. But instead, she said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before al-halal wal haram, before the prohibitions and, 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 and the, the laws and the rulings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed a surah al-mufassal. He revealed these heart softening surahs that instill a love of Allah and uh, a dedication to salvation in the hereafter in the hearts of people. And once a person has firm belief in Allah and the hereafter, then the halal and the haram uh, come a lot easier. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts now with these surahs, Surah Qaf, and Surah Qaf is a heavy, heavy, heavy surah. The Prophet وسلم, he used to recite Surah Qaf in Salat al-Jum'ah. Uh, and in fact, his entire khutbah would be about Surah Qaf. It's a, it's, a khut, it's, it's a surah that tells us about resurrection, that says, كَذَّبَتْ قَبَلَهُمْ قَوْمُ نُوحٍ with, uh, you know, uh, that, 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 that before us, Nuh and, and th- the, the people of Nuh and Thamud and Ad and Lut and, and, Fir- and, 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 and Fir'aun and Shu'ayb, all of these people uh, or these peoples rejected the message and they were punished and they were resurrected. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not just know what's in the hearts of the Sahaba, as mentioned in Surah Al-Fatih. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us and He knows our internal whispers. He knows the voice of shaitan inside of us. He knows our desires and our inclinations. He knows the taqwa in our hearts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is closer to us than our jugular vein. إِذْ يَتَلَقَّ الْمُتَلَقِّيَانِ عَنِ الْيَمِينِ وَعَنِ الشِّمَالِ قَعِيدٍ مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ ذَلِكَ مَا كُنْتَ مِنْهُ تَحِيدٌ وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ الْوَعِيدِ And so on and so forth. So the verses of death. That the angels write down every word that you say. There's not a single word that you utter except that the angels write it down. And then death comes to you. وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ Those last moments of death come to you and that is what you were trying to escape. That is what you were not paying attention to. وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ And the horn is blown into. ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ الْوَعِيدِ And this is the promised day. وَجَاءَتْ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَعَهَا سَائِقٌ وَشَهِيدٌ We come with our angels as witnesses and as guides on the day of judgment. And then the, 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 the arguments start. The shaytan says that, you know, رَبَّنَا مَا أَطْغَيْتُ the shaytan says, I didn't lead him astray. It was him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the ways that we try to blame the shayateen and that people you know, start to disperse from one another. The, the idea of personal accountability is really stressed here. That you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a human being, as a, personal, uh, as, 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 a, as a form of personal accountability. Now subhanAllah, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَنْ خَشِيَ الرَّحْمَانَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَجَاءَ بِقَلْبٍ munib." Those who had, who had fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in private, and they came with repentant hearts. So this is the third now mention of the importance of having clean hearts, pure hearts. Surah uh, Al-Fatih, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew what was in the hearts of the companions. Surah Al-Hujurat, Allah knows what's in your hearts and that's how you'll be judged. And here, Surah Qaf, Allah mentions that salvation belongs to those who come with those repentant hearts, those hearts that are turned towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Enter into paradise. Udukhuluha bi salam. Dhalika yawmul khulud. And today you have eternity. Whereas with hellfire, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no shortage of space in hellfire for those that turn away. So the third mention of the heart is here now in uh, Surah uh, Qaf. The last surah, Surah Al Dhariyah, talks about how the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can go in, in, in various ways. So the different types of winds. It, it literally means the scattered winds. And the way that the winds and, and the clouds and the angels and everything works in correlation for our benefit. However, that ni'mah can turn against us if we stay distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it did with the people that were mentioned in Al-Ahqaf. The people that were mentioned in the first surah in this juz, which were uh, Ad, the people of Hud alayhi salam, that the winds and the clouds conspired against them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used them against those people because they turned away from the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the way that all of these different things work, the way that the universe works uh, for our benefits, and it is by our belief that that benefit stays in our lives, and um, and, and we, should, we should call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time, um, seeking that benefit. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us, subhanAllah, 
وَالْمُقَسِّمَاتِ أَمْرًا Allah mentions the angels that divide His sustenance, that carry the glad tidings of His sustenance to different people. And Allah gives us the very specific incident of Ibrahim السلام, and his wife Sarah when the news, was come, when the news came to them um, of, uh, from the angels uh, of their son Ishaq and after Ishaq, um, Ya'qub. And of course, at the same time, they were on their way to destroy the nation um, of Lut alayhi salam. So in, the angels came with the, with the good news to Ibrahim alayhi salam that there is a new nation that will be born to him. But because of the turning away of the people of Lut alayhi salam, that nation was destroyed by nature. Right? Or rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the elements of nature uh, to pelt them and they were destroyed. So the angels divide and purport the, 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 the risk, the sustenance that Allah has decreed as um, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, commands them to do so. And I'll leave you with one very beautiful uh, connection as well. So we mentioned that the previous three surahs uh, mentioned the state of the heart as being the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would enter a person into paradise. Here in Surah Al-Dhariyat, verse 15, إِنَّ الْمُتَّقِينَ فِي جَنَّاتٍ وَعْيُونَ آخِذِينَ مَا أَتَاهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا قَبْلَ ذَلِكَ مُحْسِنِينَ that verily the righteous, the people who had taqwa in their hearts, the righteous are in the Jannah that was, provide, that was promised in Surah Qaf. So the righteous, the people who had righteousness in their heart, were, are, are now in the gardens that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised entrance into in Surah Qaf. أَخِذِينَ مَا أَتَاهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ They are indulging in the things that Allah has provided for them. إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا قَبْلَ ذَلِكَ مُحْسِنِينَ They were people of ihsan, people of excellence before that. What is their description? كَانُوا قَلِيلًا مِنَ اللَّيْلِ مَا يَهْجَعُونَ They used to sleep little at night. In Surah Qaf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَنْ خَشْيَ الرَّحْمَانَ بِالْغَيْبِ Those who feared Allah in the unseen. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the manifestation of that, that they were praying their night prayers, they were praying Qiyam al-Layl at night. كَانُوا قَلِيلًا مِنَ اللَّيْلِ مَا يَهْجَعُونَ وَبِالْأَسْحَارِهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ And they used to, in the hours before dawn, uh, they were they, they were asking Allah subhanahu wa taala for forgiveness. So those, that those last hour, that last hour before Fajr, that last period in Suhoor, the time of Sahar, literally the time of Suhoor, they were seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa taala. Wa fi amwalihim wal mahroom, and with their money they were giving it to the ones who asked, and even the ones who did not ask, even the ones that were not asking. These people are people of ihsan. These people are people of excellence. So they go looking for people in need to give them, even if they're not being asked. Why? Because إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا قَبْلَ ذَلِكَ مُحْسِنِينَ They were people of ihsan, people of excellence. Right? So they did not just give when they were expected to give to those that asked them, but they even went looking for people in need to give to them. So subhanAllah, this is the fear of these servants, bil ghaib. They used to sleep little at night, and in the unseen, bil ghaib, they, they turned their hearts to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's where true success and true salvation comes. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our hearts, to accept these nights of prayer that we, that we put forth um, in these last 10 nights, particularly tonight being the 27th. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us a people whose hearts are always turned towards Him and, and, and who, who are raised amongst the muttaqeen and the muhsineen on the Day of Judgment. Allahumma ameen. So today's charitable cause is actually, as I said in the beginning of this lecture, for those that are coming late now, Inshallah Ta'ala, tonight is our Valley Ranch Islamic Center fundraiser. The Valley Ranch Masjid is a very unique masjid. You see the services that we provide, mashallah. Uh, you're benefiting from it. You know, those of you that, that, that follow my Facebook Live from the systems that we have in, in the Valley Ranch Islamic Center, it's a very unique community center, mashallah, a very unique masjid that does a tremendous amount of work. It truly is a, a masjid, and I ask Allah to protect our community. Um, and to and to allow it to grow and, and your communities as well. So it does amazing work, alhamdulillah. Uh, and we have a masjid that we hope would be an example for masjids around the world, inshallah ta'ala. So tonight is our annual fundraiser. Um, we are building a new facility. We have completely outgrown our current facility. And, uh, and, and our new facility is very reflective of who we are as a community um, in the different uh, services that it will provide, inshallah ta'ala. So I really hope that if you've been benefiting from the Valley Ranch Masjid uh, live stream and recordings, which I'm sure that many of you have been, inshallah, then please consider this your masjid as well. So I'm going to post the link here, inshallah, 
And also, I'm going to invite you guys to tune in about 10.30, 10.35, inshallah ta'ala, central time, which is 11.30, 11.35 eastern time. Tonight, inshallah, you can actually tune in live to the fundraiser, inshallah ta'ala. I'll be broadcasting it live here. But in the meantime, please do give generously, inshallah ta'ala, to this cause. Jazakumullah khairan. May Allah accept your 27th night and all of your nights. See you all tonight, inshallah ta'ala, for the fundraiser. And if not, then tomorrow for our next episode of 30 for 30. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.